Hello, Believers Fellowship, friends of Believers Fellowship. Glad you could join me this morning. This is Pastor Joe. I'm at the Worship Center at the Magnolia Campus. Uh, uh, scared around behind me are the stage, the worship center, the chairs, the seating, the technical booth. This is kind of what it looks like on Sunday morning when I bring you the live service. Other than the technicians being up there and the, and the praise team being here, they kind of scatter out and around the auditorium. But, but it's pretty much empty. So it's a unique experience just speaking to a camera these days. But uh, uh, we're trying to learn how to do it. And hopefully that we're communicating with you and that you're getting the message of what we're sharing. But I did, did want to give you a few things today as, as an update of where we're at. We're continuing again by holding our services digitally and glad that you're tuning in. If you haven't, be sure and get tuned in. It is an awesome time in the Lord. The Lord is anointing it. There is a, it really is a, a, a spirit of camaraderie as much as you can have it online with people sharing and liking and commenting. Absolutely continue to share, comment, and like because that's the way the Facebook algorithm keeps boosting it out to more and more people. So we're having thousands and thousands of people to be exposed to our ministry that had never been exposed to the ministry before. Behind me, and as well as you saw on the other side of the wall over there, there's three banners there, all right? Those same banners are on this side of the wall, and they pretty much lay out and express our vision and our statement as a church. And anybody who's a member of Believer's Fellowship can ask you, uh, can tell you when I ask them, what is Believer's Fellowship all about? They'll say these three statements that I'm walking in front of for the banners. We love God, we love people, and we reach the world. That has not changed in the midst of this particular virus. I know there's a lot of churches that are doing a lot of different things, and we don't account for any other church but what God's called us to. The Bible says, who are you to judge somebody else's servants? We're all servants of the Lord. So as people make a lot of different decisions, God is moving us in a very clear path of being more committed, more dedicated, and more creative than we've had to be at times past because we're having to reach out on a lot of different levels and God has really been leading us and guiding us in some really unique and incredible ways. We're still ministering to people. We're not, we're not st stepping away from ministry. We're still supporting missionaries. Every missionary that we support, whether it's through the global ministries of, the, of our convention, our state associations, our, our local association, we're still sending those checks, all right? We, we're still doing what the Lord's called us to do. For our independent missionaries, other missionaries that we support in Africa, in Central America, uh, in, in, in Belize, in different parts of the world, in Cuba, we're still sending those checks out. All right, we're still supporting them. We're not, we're not going to forsake them in this particular time. I know in America we're having difficulty. There's some parts of the world, third countries in the world, that are having even greater difficulties. So we continue to minister. Let's all continue to do what God's called us to do. We've had to obviously push some of the, the, the ministry trips for like Cuba and Central America and Belize to farther in the year. But we're still doing those ministries. We're still working in those areas. We're still standing true to love God, love people, and reach the world. Locally, remember, we have our prayer wall. We have these prayer walls up at, 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 at both campuses. They're based upon the, the, the Western Wall, the Wailing Wall there in Jerusalem. It's a, pretty much a picture of that. But we bring our, our prayer request in here. When you send in your prayer request to prayerbfchurch.com, they go up on this wall. They're prayed for. They're sent out to the prayer line and prayed for. Anybody can come by any time and stand in front of the, our prayer wall here and pray. If you can't get to the church, we, well, yes, we practice social distancing. If someone's in, give them space, move to another place. Or, so that's all going on. But the idea is here, we're not stopping. We're continuing to do what God has called us to do. So it's important that you continue to do what God's called you to do in supporting the church. We want to be generous in these times. In a time when so many people are hoarding, you know, and keeping for themselves and you see people just piling up stuff at the stores or stuff that last them, you know, could probably last four people four months, but they're kind of taking it for themselves. If you see a believer's fellowship member and they're like that, you can be sure it's not for him. They've learned how to be generous. They've learned how to give. And they're shopping for somebody that can't get out and shop. And they're helping somebody that can't do it. We've delivered groceries from my household to other families. So many of you have as well. We have a food pantry that is still working. If you've been displaced from your job or furloughed or whatever, take no shame. That's this, that, that food pantry at Believer's Fellowship is there for that purpose. Let us know. We'll work an appointment out. We'll, we'll get together what, what are your greatest needs from the pantry. What we have, we'll share. We're having people that are going out in, in other food pantries in the community that are participating with us. So this ministry is here for you. We continue to share in our benevolence funds to reach out and help people to meet their needs. So we're not cutting back. This is not a time for any of us to do that. 
I, I've watched the news and, I, and I've seen, you know, uh, uh, how they're going and talking to mental health experts because so many people, I think 36, 37 percent last week said that they were living in depression. And I've listened to the, the experts give their recommendations to, to people about what they should do and how they should handle their problems. And one of the thought interesting, one of the number one uh, counsels that are given by these people always starts out with this. Well, you've got to, you've got to love yourself. If you're in depression, if you're in anxiety, if you're in fear, then you, you've got to, you've got to love yourself and you, you gotta, you know, you gotta, you, you gotta put yourself first and you gotta, you gotta think of yourself first and you got to, you got to be kind to yourself and be compassionate to yourself. And let me tell you, folks, that may all be well and good, but that's at the bottom of the list in the Bible. The top of the list in the Bible is love God and love people before yourself, more than yourself. That's where it starts. Get your attention. If you're living in fear, your job or anxieties or the, 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 getting the virus, you need to set your heart and your mind on things above the Bible says and that you fill your heart and your mind with, with his promises to you and his word to you. Then you look for a way to reach to, out to somebody else. Find somebody else that's anxious. Find somebody else that's living in fear. Find somebody else that's having the same kind of issues you have and give to them. Well, the promise of Luke 6, 38 is broad and wide and universal. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom. So give. In times of difficulty, that's not the time to hoard and be greedy and self and self-centered and selfish. It's the time to care about other people. That's what Jesus has given us. That's what he's taught us. That's what he did. He didn't come to, 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 to be master, it says. He came to serve. That's where our life should rest. How are we going to serve those around us? How are we going to love those around us? Well, enough preaching for right now. Let me tell you, I hope you had the opportunity to come by and get your cups. A lot of people have been coming to church and getting their communion cups for Sunday services. These are really cool. We ordered these right prior to the, to the, to the beginning of the outbreak because we knew something like this might happen uh, so that people couldn't get together. These are very, they're sanitized, they're very sanitary. The first layer of this little cup has the wafer in it. You peel it back and you get the wafer out. The second layer has the juice in it. Come by, get these for your family. Maybe you have someone around you who can't get out. Maybe they're elderly, they have issues. Get some for their family as well. Let them know you're coming. Pick them up for them, all right, and get some. And then have them ready at our Sunday service, which is going to be very, very cool. And it's going to be a tremendous blessing. So you don't want to miss Sunday services. We have lots of worship music going on and intermingled into all the worship. And the music is going to be the actual taking of the communion together. So if you can't get by and you have to prepare your own, then I would say just stick to the biblical pattern as much as possible. If you have grape juice or cran grape, if not any kind of juice extract from a from a you know from fruit, like apple juice, whatever, get that out. Uh, if you don't have that, then just get some soda. Or, but I recommend to do it close to the Bible as possible. And then a wafer, which is basically unleavened bread, a cracker, a saltine, anything like that. Even a, a Dorito chip ultimately is unleavened bread. So, but get something like that. And have it ready to share and to take as we start at 9 a.m with our communion service live, be a part of it. And when you get online, let us know you're online. It's important that you just, whether it's a thumbs up or an amen or a praise the Lord or how y'all doing today, uh, comment. Let us know that you're there. And then even as important as, as caring, as sharing and liking and commenting is, is to just make sure that you're not doing this by yourself. That you, you let other people know. Uh, let people know that you're going to be viewing on Sunday morning. Send your friends a link. Uh, send an email out. Send a text out. But check on each other, love each other, invite each other, and care for each other. And let's just do what we've been talking about for the last 30 some 40 years as a church. We love God. We love people. And we're here to reach the world. God bless you. And I will see you Sunday morning.